When Salman Rahman co-founded Beximco in the 1970s, the country of Bangladesh was in its infancy. Fresh off a brutal war for independence, the new government faced daunting economic challenges. Now the country's economy has grown, and so has its biggest company. Do you ever get overawed by the sheer, the poverty that we can see? I mean, it's just so extraordinary, the amount, even though it's got a lot better. No, but I don't agree with you, uh, Richard. Where do you see poverty over here? This is all uh, progress. This is prosperity. Bexham Co. brings in hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue each year. The interests are as varied as energy, financial services, pharmaceuticals, and of course, the rock-solid textiles. Rachman went from being an entrepreneur to a cabinet minister and advisor to the prime minister. Rachman invited me on a helicopter tour to see the origins of Made in Bangladesh. Can't you make a product that doesn't have a hole in it? <laughs> it, it won't sell. <laughs> The facility employs tens of thousands of people, spinning yarn, weaving fabric, making denim. It is state of the art, and Ruckman told me the supplies come in from all over the world. The United States, uh, that, Middle East, India, Egypt. So that cotton can cross the Atlantic several times? Absolutely. So we start with the bale of cotton, yeah. we end up with a shirt. Made in Bangladesh. Basically, it starts at the catwalk, catwalks of uh, Paris and Milan. And you and I and everyone else actually have enough clothes. So, you know, why do you need to buy more clothes? So, fashion is really a conspiracy to make us, uh, make our closets obsolete. It's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact, you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room. So it tells you that unless you come and spend more money, you're not in sync and you're out of date. Hang on, you're just, you're just arguing against your own business here. No, 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 no really. I'm, I'm arguing in favor of my business. <laughs> in the sense that uh, if that conspiracy was not there, then we would not have a business. Question. The garment, the t-shirt that is sold for six, seven dollars, four, five euros, five pounds. I mean, how do you make any money out of that by the time it gets to Europe or the US? It's very, very difficult because when we are negotiating with the buyers, you know, it's uh, like Navet said, it's, we are like an ant on an elephant's trunk. So do you have power with the big buyers, the Walmart, the Primarchs, the Alt? Do you have power with them? You know, you take Walmart, $500 million, billion dollar gorilla, and he's in a position to bully companies like Procter & Gamble. So relatively, when he rounds off his balance sheet, many Bexemcos disappear. But we still have power because he needs compliance, he needs beautiful product, and we try it, and we need the scale to pay 40,000 workers, so we have the efficiency of scale. The question of compliance took on greater importance 10 years ago. After the Rana Plaza disaster, when more than a thousand people died, when a nine-story factory collapsed in Dhaka. Only months before, a fire killed a hundred workers in a Tarzine Fashions clothing factory nearby. And the back-to-back -back disasters sparked international outcry about working conditions. The Bangladeshi government promised to improve factories, and now Hussein says the buyers put major pressure on them to ensure safe conditions for workers. How do I know that the moment I leave, the, all the good work, the, the compliance is just going to go out the window, nobody's locking, back hangers can be paid. Uh, Who's protecting it? Number one. Very good, very good question. The protection is coming from the buyers. So you remember that after the building collapse in Bangladesh, which everybody talks about, the big fire, the industry got together, the government got together, the buyers got together, and the brands got together. And we put in a lot of investment in improving the quality of the buildings and for fire safety. 
Today's textile industry is state-of-the-art. And while the garments industry's progress has not always been straightforward, these factories have made it the fabric of Bangladesh's economy. And its executives hope it will continue to increase the country's prosperity, one pair of jeans at a time.